Welcome to Hope Today. We are so excited that you joined us today. We've got a great program for you. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Sydney Goldman, and, and I know we got Amy somewhere around here in the United States. Where are you at, Amy? <laughs> hey, oh, just sunny Florida. <laughs> no oh. big deal. No <laughs> but big I miss deal. you guys, and I do miss Pittsburgh, and that is the will of God for my life, so I, it's all good. <laughs> So while you've been down in Florida, Amy, what is there anything God has just been putting in your heart or your spirit as you've been soaking up the sunshine and just resting? Yeah, you know, we're here with about 10 pastor couples and it is so good to just take time away and and talk with people that that get what you're going through, where you're at, and they're dealing with the same things and they're talking about the same issues and we all have the same issues over and over. And it's just, it's refreshing and it's invigorating. You know, even today as we're talking about, you know, moms and mothers, it's so good to sit down and talk to women and others who have gone through what you're going through. Nothing is new under the sun. God is faithful. God is good. So that's another reason that we can have hope today. That truly really is why we can have hope today. And so if you're a mom out there watching, we have this show is designed for you just to bring some encouragement to your heart. And we're so excited because we have Carol McLeod joining us. She's a popular speaker and author, and she's going to share some parenting wisdom for your child of any age. So we're excited about that. Wait a minute. What about the guys? Guys, don't change the channel, okay? <laughs> I'm still, I'm here. So we're going to have uh, some guy perspectives too and some grandparent perspectives when we talk to Carol. But we want to start off with a, a verse today. Romans 14, 17 says this, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I, I, you know, I love my eating and drinking, but <laughs> <laughs> that's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, Sydney, is is to have those things that are eternal that matter. Mm, you know, just thinking about that, like one thing I've just been really enjoying is just really sitting in the presence of God and just enjoying that time with Him. And so it's just like, I think of the joy and the Holy Spirit. There is nothing like being able to talk to the Holy Spirit, to listen to Him. He leads us, He guides us, He leads us into all truth and understanding. And I just think, you know, there's a lot of things I feel like, you know, just as, I mean, as a young person, you know, there's certain things of the world will make you think, oh, this is the, where you get happiness doing this and doing that. But truly there's no greater joy. There's no greater hope than the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. Right, Amy? Right. And you know, <laughs> this is kind of an important scripture because Paul's telling us this is what the kingdom of heaven looks like. And we are heaven's representatives here on earth. So there, there should be some righteousness. There should be some peace and there should be some joy when, when people are with us, when people are talking to us, when people are in our presence, we really should be representing the kingdom of God. I love the scripture that follows that, that just says, by walking in these kingdom realities, it pleases God and earns the respect of others. I want to be pleasing to God, and I know you do too. So let's please God today. Let How do we bring heaven to earth? We walk out this, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. We walk in the peace of God. We walk in the joy given by the Holy Spirit, and you can do it. You know, I think that, that that is so key, Amy, is that these are those things that make up for the kingdom of God. And, uh, you know, so so often in the kingdom of God, we've argued about things that are not righteousness, joy, and peace, that are not living in the Holy Ghost. They are things of, you know, uh, doctrine that is secondary or things of uh, how to worship or things of, in this case, eating or drinking. Is this the right thing to eat or the wrong thing to drink or the right or wrong this or that? And, and Paul's saying, listen, that's not what matters. Here are the things. Living out your life this way. Living out your life in such a way that you, you just exude the kingdom of God to other people. That's what's important. It truly is important. I think it's just important to have our minds just centered on him. And, you know, I think there's a lot of times in our culture, it's so divisive. It's so, nah, 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 nah. but one thing I'm just realizing is like, I think it's so important for us to first look inside of ourselves to take that, you know, step to look at the speck in our own eye, as Jesus is saying. And so we just want to encourage you today. If you need any encouragement, if you need any hope, extra hope bringing brought to you today, we always have our prayer partners that are standing by at 888-665-4483. We're always available 24-7 just to talk to you.
Well, we are so excited for our next guest because I love what she says. She says, for thousands of years in a myriad of cultures, women have forged identity, unconditional love, and vast purpose in the calling of motherhood. Carol McLeod is the mother of five children in heaven and five children on earth. And as a popular speaker and author, she's passionate about helping women find the joy and understand the eternal purpose in parenting. In her new book, Rooms of a Mother's Heart, she shares her experiences and encourages others on how to raise godly children of any age. Can Carol, thank you so much for joining us on Hope Today. Oh, Sydney, it's my delight. Thank you for having me. I love real life. Oh. And so it's just so fun to be with you all today. Yeah, we're so glad that you're with us on Hope Today. And Carol, I just want to ask you, you know, the scripture of Romans 14, 17, that for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit. What does that speak to your heart in regards as a mother? Yeah, it's one of the guiding scriptures in my book, actually, Sydney, because as moms, we can be so tempted to try to have a Pinterest style home or an Instagram style home. Well, that, that's the eating and drinking. That's the tangible. That's what you see with your natural eyes. But as as believers, as daughters of God, as, as we're creating homes, as we're raising children, we must very, be very careful to keep our hearts and our eyes focused on the righteousness of the kingdom, the peace of Christ, and the joy of the Holy Spirit. That's what a godly, enthusiastic, wonderful home looks like. Righteous, peace, and joy. And moms, you can do it. I know you can, because you have the Holy Spirit. I love that it's righteousness, peace, and joy for motherhood. You know, I'm not a mom yet, but I'm just so encouraged, inspired just by going through your book. And you know, Carol, tell us a little bit about your motherhood journey because it wasn't like you always wanted to become a mom. Can you tell us about that? No, you know, first of all, I thought I was gonna be single and serve Jesus my whole life. And then I met this dashing man of God and fell head over heels in love. And Craig and I were married and serving the Lord together. I was actually climbing the corporate ladder um, when we realized I was pregnant. And it took me by surprise because I just thought I was going to be this career woman serving God. And when I had my first baby, when Matthew Craig McLeod was placed in my arms, the Holy Spirit whispered to me, this is why you were born. This is why I created you. So motherhood took me by surprise. It captured my heart by surprise. You know, Carol, I think a lot of women, I know my age is like millennials. It's like people are having babies later in life. And so a lot of people think they were in the same place that you were, you know, just thinking, I'm going to climb up the career ladder. I want to go into corporate America, whatever it may look like. But then they become a mom. Maybe they planned it or it's unexpected, like the way it happened for you. And, you know, what would you say is one of the greatest things that you learned about motherhood that God just really showed you through your first son and even your other children about the purpose and the eternal purpose and calling of being a mom? Yeah, Sydney, I, I love talking to young moms. I love leaving a deposit of wisdom in their lives. And I, I was, as I said, I was surprised by motherhood because my heart was taking me in a different direction. And as you said, a lot of moms find themselves in that place today. And my words of advice to them would be this. Um, it goes so fast. It goes so fast. You will blink and you'll be sending your children off to college. So enjoy every day. Be invested in every single day. Be all in. Put your phone down, close the computer screen, and be a mom. And one of the other things that I would say to young moms is, listen, there is a false philosophy in the world today that says, don't hold your babies, that says, let them cry. And all oh, my friends, lean in and listen. You don't spoil a baby with love. A baby comes with really just one need, to be loved by the ones who've created it, by the ones who've been given the blessing of raising this little person. So hold your babies, rock your babies, sing over your babies, pray over your babies. It will develop a security in their lives that nothing else will do. You know, Carol, I love watching you at this season of life as I'm in the really the, the grunt work of being a mom with teenagers and young adults. And I look at you and I think, oh good, there's hope. I can finish strong. Um, 
what would you say to mothers that are just absolutely losing it? I mean, they, the moms need a timeout. The, the moms are frustrated. I mean, I see them as a pastor. There's tears coming down their eyes. They're looking at me and they, they just feel overwhelmed. What would you say to that mom? Oh, Amy, you know, you are in the season of life that I call the trenches of motherhood, that uh, there's just work here. There's battle going around and around you, but you're in it. You are in it yeah. to win it, right? Yeah, but right. to those moms who are just overwrought today, who are just burdened by so much to do, by schedules, by laundry and clothes, this is what I would say to you. Take some time to read your Bible today. Put on worship music. Let worship music set the atmosphere of your home. You know, when we're in the hands-on season of mothering, which, Amy, you are right now, th there are other things that have to go, right? Because you can't do it all. You know, I was in a, a store the other day, and they had a Mother's Day display, and the, the sign for mom said, Mom, you are enough. You are more than enough. And I thought, well, there's some truth in that statement, and there's some fiction in that statement. Because the truth is, we're not enough. Without Jesus, y'all, yeah. we're not enough. We can't do anything without Jesus. And motherhood reveals that to us. You know, Amy, I like to say to moms, listen, the highest call for a woman is not to be a mother. The highest call for a woman is to be like Jesus. And if you are a mom, motherhood will show you all the ways you need Jesus. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is so good. I, I, I really appreciate that, Carol. You know, I, I had uh, a conversation with my son recently where I said that famous line that you just said that it goes so fast, you know, and here he is with these two young ones, very active and a third one on the way. He goes, yeah, that's what they tell me, <laughs> you know, that it, 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 but it does go so fast. But one of the things that I, I noticed from a, a, a husband's perspective, from a father's perspective is to see a new facet when we, when my wife became a mother, there was like a new facet of her that I had not seen before. And, and it seems to me that motherhood and fatherhood brings out things that God has put within us that we don't even know are there. You know, Tom, I think that's really true. One of the chapters in my book is called The Birthing Room. And it talks about the things that are birthed in you that you never knew were there when you become a mom. And this is the thing, when you become a mom, old dreams don't die. You might just put a different timetable on them, but all types of new um, passions and unconditional love and patience, hopefully, is birthed in you when, when you become a mom. And Tom, you and I were talking before the show how fun it is to see our kids parent, right? And, and when I see my daughter be a mom, I see my mom in her. It's a generational legacy. You know, Psalm 145 that says that one generation shall, shall tell of the works of the Lord to the next generation. And that's the high calling of parenting, is that we get to raise a generation of children who are the Daniels, the Esthers, the Ruths, the Peters, the Pauls, the Billy Grahams of the next generation. I love that so much as hearing about, you know, just being a mother or a father, like that call that God gives is just to, you know, birth and to pour into your children the purposes and the plans that God has for them. And Carol, I just think, I'm just even thinking about my own mom, right? <laughs> that I just, even though I'm 33 years old, I'm like, still, she's still mom to me. She's still parents to me. What would you say to those parents right now that have adult children that are my age and just some wisdom and encouragement how to continue to parent and to love them well? So Sydney, I tell moms who are in my season of life, so Amy, lean in and listen, because you're almost there, that our adult children can run away from our words, but they can never escape our prayers. So our strategy should be to talk less and pray more. That's my word of wisdom for moms of adult children. Talk less and pray more, because your prayers can do what your human wisdom will never do. And Carol, just on okay, that Carol. Oh, that's, go ahead, Amy. That sounds good in theory, but talk less and pray more. All I want to do is give my kids my opinion. <laughs> so literally, how do you how do you not give your opinion to your young adult children? 
When okay, so kids were, kids were teenagers, you know, teenagers don't like to be lectured. And so what I would do is I, I would say to them, okay, mom gets one minute. You're going to have a mom minute. And for one minute, I get to say anything I want to say. And so for one minute, I'd say, listen, I, I'm not sure about the friends you're choosing, and this is why. And when the minute was done, it was done. And then I got to say what I needed to say, and they didn't feel lectured to. So maybe the moms of teens and young adults can try that. Have a mom minute. Not a mom five minutes, but a mom <laughs> minute. So good. That's so great, a mom minute. Well, Carol, we're gonna have a little more with you when we come right after the break. So moms and dads, stay tuned. We'll be right more with more Hope Today right after this. television our heart beats to reach just one more with the hope of Jesus Christ even when our world shakes God can never be shaken will you join us in our life-saving mission we can't do it without you our ministry is viewer supported which means you help us to spread the gospel partner with us today through easy pledge our automatic monthly giving program your contribution keeps our shows on the air it makes our prayer lines available 24 7 and it allows us to support other ministries through Cornerstone Care. Easy Pledge automatically deducts your gift every month using your credit or debit card. Sign up today by calling 888-665-4483 or by visiting our website at ctvn.org backslash donate. Thank you for helping us to be a bridge of hope to reach just one more. We're so glad you're joining us for Hope Today and we are talking about parenting, the joys of motherhood and just the wisdom that God gives through his word. And we're so excited because we have Carol McLeod. She's joining us to talk about this topic. And I know Tom has a question about the phase of life that you're in with children. Well, uh, you know, Carol, we, uh, we're both in, in that uh, phase of grandparenting now and uh, it's wonderful. I remember I loved be, being a dad, loved, still love being a dad, but loved uh, being a dad with, to my young children. And I thought when people said, oh, grandparenting is even better, I thought, well, I don't know if that can be. Well, it's just different, but it's great. It's fantastic. Could you speak a little bit to the grandparents out there about, or those soon to be grandparents, what, how is it different? Yeah, it is different, Tom. That is for sure. You know, we're not responsible for the day-to-day -day care of the children. I was laughing beforehand because I told Amy that when the grandchildren come to my house, I say to them, you're at Marmy's house. You don't have to eat vegetables here because grandparenting is different. We're not in charge of the day-to-day -day discipline, but we still have a strong voice in the lives of our grandchildren. And when my grandchildren come over, I try to have a stack of books for them, Tom, so that we can read together. We play games, we do puzzles. But the thing I love most about grandparenting, Tom, is not the spoiling, but it is the spiritual impact that I can have on their lives, that I can share with them the old songs of the faith, that we talk about the word of God. I, I can leave dishes piled high in the sink when the grandchildren are there and, and we can sit on the floor together and talk about the goodness of God. So I, I just wanna really put a vision for grandparenting, Tom and people's hearts who are our age, that your spiritual authority in the lives of your grandchildren is profound. So take, take that by the reins and really lead your grandchildren, um, especially when they're little, because that's when they'll listen. So, so be that voice of wisdom, the voice of unconditional love, and be a spiritual guiding force in your grandchildren's lives. You'll never regret it. Carol, what would you say to a grandparent that lives out of state that maybe they can't have the grandkids over in their home and what would you suggest for them? Yes, that's my story, Amy. I have um, some that live in town here with me and, and some that live thousands of miles away. Again, it's intentionality. You know, we Zoom once a week. I read them books. I actually give them piano lessons over Zoom. Um, when they were all doing virtual learning, my son called me and said, Mom, could you please do math with Amelia? I just can't do that. So, so be intentional. 
Amy, we live in such a great time in history. When, when we have Zoom or Skype or whatever it is, FaceTime on your phone, set dates with your grandchildren, send them little packages. It doesn't have to be expensive. One thing I do with my grandchildren is I'll send them a book and a, and a pack of cookies. Sorry about that, Christopher and Jordan, yes. but it's what I do with children. And then we have dates where we read the same book and talk about it and, and eat cookies together. So I think it just takes being an intentional grandmother when your grandchildren live far away, but make those Zoom dates, those FaceTime dates with your with your grandchildren. Send them cards and postcards. Children still love to get letters in the mail. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to ask you on that same like vein of talking about grandparents. I know there's a lot of grandparents in our society that have had to step in as the parent parental role because of absent mothers and fathers. And what would you say to that grandmother, that grandfather that, you know, they see their adult children, they've gone wayward, they've gone a different way, maybe it's addiction or whatever it may be, but now they have to take care of that child and they're struggling. What would you say to them? What kind of hope would you speak into their life today? Yes, Sydney, that's a great question because that too is a reality of our society, of our moment in history. And so let me, let me give them just two words of wisdom. First of all, oh, you need Jesus more than ever before. So make sure that you're growing in your faith. Make sure that you're reading your Bible. Make sure that you're part of a vibrant church because you're gonna need a community to help you and you're gonna need the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit to parent at an age when you wish you were grandparenting. But let me tell you, God can give you the power for that. The Bible says that he gives us all kinds of power and God, our Father, has that power to help a grandparent re-enter the world of parenting. I know that he does. And, and secondly, I want to tell you this, the last chapter of my book is called The Front Porch. And The Front Porch is where we say goodbye to our children. And it's also where parents like me stand and wait and pray for mm -hmm. prodigals to come home. You know, when we parent, when we are godly parents and we raise our children to believe in Christ, they still have a will of their own. But this is our promise in scripture, Sydney. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. It doesn't say when they're teens or young adults that they won't depart from it. And so parents like me, we stand on the front porch and we pray our children home. We stand in faith like the prodigal father did, that, that someday they're going to come running home to the father's house. So, so that's what I would say to, to grandparents who are raising grandchildren. And Carol, can you just take a moment and pray for that grandparent, pray for that parent that is believing for that prodigal son or daughter to come home to Jesus? I would, Sydney. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. And we come to you today and we're asking, Father, for you to lead our wayward children. Um, Father God, you are the God of all power and you love our children more than we do. So Jesus, we're coming to you this morning and asking you to send the Holy Spirit in relentless pursuit after those children of ours who've left their faith, who are struggling in their faith. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen these moms and dads and grandparents who are raising the next generation. Father, we love you and we love serving you. And Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name. If you have a prodigal, I want you to say their name out loud. I want you to call them home in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we trust you with the lives of our children. In your name I pray, amen. 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 Carol, thank you so much for just pouring your heart and your wisdom for parents and grandparents. And if that is you today, what Carol just prayed really touched your spirit and your heart, please give us a call on our prayer line at 888-665-4483. Carol, thank you so much for joining us today. Her book is called Rooms of a Mother's Heart. How touching. I, I love this conversation, even though not being a parent yet, guys, I know, Amy, this is very real. This is so up your wheelhouse. And it's so important just to understand, you know, where God is calling you as a mom to parent your children well. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking even as she was praying, you know, how much a mother's heart reflects the father's heart. 
I mean, like I would do anything for my children. I would give them a liver, a kidney, give them my blood, give them my life. I give them my finances. I give them my my words, my thoughts. They, they just take up so much space in my heart and my thoughts and my life and everything I do and how much more the heavenly father is just absolutely enthralled with us. He, he believes in us. He is with us. He will never leave us. He loves our kids more than we love our kids. They're actually his kids and we're just stewards over them. And so I just, I thank God for God creating mothers who through thick and thin, high and low, rich and poor, good and bad, they're saying, you know what? I don't care. That's my kid. And I will fight for my kid. And our God fights for us and loves us fiercely. So Sydney, I can't wait for you to experience that feeling of being a little mother. You know, I, 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 both Amy and Carol uh, said uh, a line that I've said a lot, that God loves our children more than we do. And we see, we see that when we say, why is it he doing what the thing? Well, there is a free will involved there. There is a free will of that other person that God won't violate, but he is drawing them even now. And if you're one of those, just believe God is drawing your children now with, uh, the Bible speaks of tender cords of love. He's, he's, he's reeling them in. Uh, they can resist, but his love is strong. And, and I just trust he's gonna reveal, reel in your child today. And Tom, just as you were speaking, I just really feel there's someone watching out there that you feel like giving up. And I just wanna tell you, do not give up on your children. I know my mom prayed for me. I know grandma's praying for me. I know even my husband's story, the same thing that we would just, we just know the prayers of our mothers, of our fathers, of our grandparents, it reeled us into the kingdom. It brought us humbly to our knees. And so I just wanna encourage you today, if you've been crying over your child, crying about the decisions they made, crying because they went wayward, they went left, they went right, they are doing things that you never thought would happen. I'm telling you, just keep praying, keep believing, God hears your prayers and he is going to bring your wayward son, your wayward daughter home. You know, as we, as we uh, think about this, uh, Carol talked about pr praying on the porch. And that was a reference to the prodigal son who saw his, I mean, to the father, who saw his son, the prodigal, afar off. Why? Because he was on the porch praying. He saw him coming. God is reaching out to you. If you don't know him, give yourself to him today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, stuck in a hopeless place? Author Mark Negley will show you how to navigate life's journey from grief to happiness. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.